This video is going to introduce the topic of diastereotopism and how we identify diastereotopic positions in our molecules. Uh, it's essentially an expansion of a video that I did on identifying chemical environments. Um, we're just doing it in three dimensions now. So if we use this as an example molecule and we want to identify the proton chemical environments in it, then we would start at the, the left hand side and go one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we've not numbered some of the, uh, the protons in this molecule because we know that via planes of symmetry or axes of rotation, they're in the same chemical environment as the ones that are already numbered. So on the benzene ring, this position is also chemical environment 2, and this position is also chemical environment 3. Similarly with the methyl groups at the end, we know because there are axes of rotation in that group that all of those protons are going to be in the same chemical environment. So we're going to focus on position 4 in this molecule and the derivative that I'm going to show you in a moment. Um, but let's convert the molecule into 3D so that we can see what we're doing in terms of these axes of rotation uh, and planes of symmetry. So what we're going to do now is just turn the molecule 90 degrees towards you. So we're going to start looking down on top of this oxygen atom here, like this. And if we're looking down on the backbone of the molecule, we can see the plane of symmetry that's all the way through the middle of it. And if we look at position 4, then one of the protons on position 4 is on either side of this plane of symmetry. So the plane of symmetry runs straight through carbon 4, and um, each of the, its protons are on either side of the plane of symmetry. That means that they are chemically equivalent. All right? Any protons that are on the opposite sides of a plane of symmetry must be chemically equivalent. So when we look at the proton NMR spectrum of this molecule, position 4 will give us a 2H singlet because there are no protons on the adjacent positions for it to couple to, and they won't couple to each other because they're in the same chemical environment. So if we change the molecule slightly and just add a methyl group onto what was position 5, um, and we'll just renumber the compound, obviously we've added a chemical environment because we've added a CH3 group in here. But what else have we done to the molecule? Well, if we look at the signal that we get for the protons on position 4 now, we don't get a 2H singlet anymore we get this multiplet, which looks a bit like a quartet, but actually it's two 1H doublets. And if we colour coordinate them, you can see they're two separate signals. So why are we getting two signals from position four now? Well, let's take a look at the molecule in 3D again, and let's turn it on its end so we're looking down the backbone. And we can now see that there is no plane of symmetry down the backbone of the molecule anymore. Because we've added this methyl group onto uh, what was carbon five, uh, we've broken that plane of symmetry and we've actually created a stereocenter here. So we've got one, two, three, four different groups all attached to a central carbon. And one of the things that stereocenters do is break symmetry. So we no longer have a plane of symmetry down the backbone of the molecule, meaning that we no longer have a plane of symmetry between the two protons on carbon four. So that means that the two protons on carbon four are in different chemical environments. And I've just numbered these 4A and 4B. So because they're not chemically equivalent, they'll give you separate signals. Uh, they're capable of coupling to each other. And because this is two protons that are attached to the same uh, atom, in this case carbon, this is what we call diastereotopic. So the, the protons on four are a diastereotopic CH2 group. Um, and if we remind ourselves of the signal that we got, we ended up with two 1H doublets. That's because each proton is now giving us a separate signal. And because they're no longer chemically equivalent, they can couple to each other. So 4A is coupling to 4B, and that's giving us a doublet. And 4B is coupling to 4A, and that's also giving us a doublet. So let's see a few more examples of breaking planes of symmetry. So we're going to use substituted pyrrolidines for this. And we're going to start with pyrrolidine itself. Now, if we were to number chemical environments in pyrrolidine, we would number them like this. So we've got the protons that are adjacent to the nitrogen and the ones that aren't. Um, and there's a plane of symmetry straight through the middle of the molecule. So everything on this side is reflected on that side and vice versa. But if we were to draw all of the protons in, in three dimensions, we also notice that there is a plane of symmetry in the screen. So everything that's above the plane uh, of the screen, so coming out towards you on these wedge bonds, is reflected in everything that's going away into the screen on the hash bonds. So that means that everything above the plane must be chemically equivalent with everything below the plane. So because we've got our two chemical environments here, it means that the two protons on position one are chemically equivalent, um, and the two protons on, on position two are chemically equivalent as well. And then there's a plane of symmetry on the backbone, so everything on this side is mirrored on everything, uh, with everything on that side. So there's no diastereotopism going on in this molecule. 
So what happens if we add some substituents here? So I'm using this dimethyl derivative. Now, this is uh, this has got two stereocenters, but it's not a chiral molecule. Right? It's a meso compound. So if you imagine the mirror image of this molecule is the same thing. Uh, but the, the stereocenters there still break the symmetry of the molecule. So it's still symmetrical this way. All right, we still have a plane of symmetry down the backbone, so we can still number these chemical environments on the ring, one and two, and that's reflected on the opposite side of the molecule. But if we look at the molecule in 3D now, we've got these two methyl groups which are above the plane. And if you imagine the, 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 the screen being a mirror plane, that's not a mirror plane anymore because there's a hydrogen on the opposite side, so there's no reflection between these two groups. So it means that we've broken the plane that's in the screen. So everything on the top of the screen is in a different chemical environment to everything on the bottom of the screen. So if we colour coordinate this, um, we can basically think of it as being the green protons here are on the same face of the molecule as the methyl group, the blue protons are on the same face as the red hydrogen. So in this case, uh, position 2 is now diastereotopic and you would number these uh, chemical environments separately. I, I tend to use A and B, but you can renumber them if you want. Let's move on to proline. Now we can see on proline that actually we've broken the symmetry um, down the, the centre of the ring now. There's no plane of symmetry here anymore. So all of these chemical environments are different around the ring. So it's one, two, three, and four. And if we look at these protons in 3D, uh, because we have a stereocenter here, the carboxylate group is coming out of the screen towards you, and the hydrogen is going into the the screen away from you so there's no plane of symmetry in the screen either and that means that all of the protons around the ring on proline are in different chemical environments so one two and three are all diastereotopic and you would expect to see one two three four five six seven different proton signals in your nmr spectrum for, for proline so it's not just limited to protons um, it's basically anything that you've got uh, two atoms connected to the same uh, carbon. So in this case we've got a geminal dimethyl group, so we've got two methyl groups here that are attached to the same carbon, and we've got a breaking symmetry over here. And if we draw that in 3D we can see it more clearly. So it doesn't matter which enantiomer of this you use, the same is true. You'll always have one methyl group which is on the same face of the molecule as this CH3, and one that's on the opposite face. So this is breaking the plane of symmetry that's in the screen, and therefore, these two methyl groups are not chemically equivalent. Um, so in your proton NMR spectrum, you'll get two uh, 3H singlets rather than one 6H singlet if there was no break in symmetry here. Uh, and actually, in the carbon spectrum as well, you'll get two separate signals because each of these carbon atoms here uh, are not chemically equivalent with each other. So just to relate this back to the video we did on 2D NMR, um, one of the, the useful things that uh, HSQC can do is clear up uh, very complex proton NMR spectra, like this is the spectrum for cholesterol here. And you can see it's a bit of a forest of signals. But if we take the HSQC, it sort of splits the proton NMR into two dimensions. So actually you can see all of the individual um, proton environments that are going up to making this, this sort of messy uh, area of the spectrum. And actually one of the things that you can look out for is anywhere that you've got two proton chemical environments which are correlating to the same carbon. Um, so in an HSQC spectrum, because this is a 1J coupling, uh, actually it means that both of these proton chemical environments are connected to the same carbon. And the only way that you can have two different chemical environments um, from proton perspective coupling to the same carbon is if they're diastereotopic. So this is a really good way of identifying pairs of diastereotopic protons, is you just look for things that are on the same uh, or coupling to the same carbon in the HSQC spectrum. And you can see in cholesterol, actually, there's a ton of these uh, because there's a lot of CH2 groups in the molecule and actually all of them are diastereotopic because there's no plane of symmetry in the screen here. So you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 CH2 positions, all of which are diastereotopic. So you're expecting 22 proton environments uh, in the molecule already. So you can see here we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 uh, signals that are correlating to carbon. So we've got 11 carbons with CH2s on, but there are 22 separate proton NMR signals making them up. Um, it's just that there's, there's two correlating to every carbon because they're all diastereotopic. So if you're unsure whether a CH2 is diastereotopic or not, whether your protons are in the same chemical environment, you can do what's called the substitution test for chemical equivalence. So the idea is that you pick your two nuclei, they can be hydrogens or carbons, it doesn't really matter, um, and you change one atom 
to something else. It doesn't matter what the something else is, you just change one of the atoms and it'll give you a different molecule. You then change the other atom from the original molecule to give you a different molecule. Okay, and then you compare the two molecules you've formed. So in this case, the one on the left and the one on the right. And you see what the structural relationship is between them. Now, if the molecules are identical as these two are, all right, so these are identical compounds. This one is just rotated 180 degrees uh, in the plane of the screen. So if they're identical, uh, the original atoms are what we call homotopic. Um, and homotopic protons are chemically equivalent. So these are chemically equivalent, they're not diastereotopic, they will give you a single signal in your NMR spectrum. If we change the compound now and see what happens with this one, we do the same steps as we did before. We change one of the, um, one of the protons for something else and we change the other proton for something else and we compare the two molecules that we formed. Now in this case, these are enantiomers of each other. They are non-superimposable mirror images. And if the two compounds that you've drawn are enantiomers, then these are what we call enantiotopic protons. Now, enantiotopic protons, like homotopic protons, are also chemically equivalent, right? They have identical chemical shifts. So in this case, these are not diastereotopic. They will give you a single signal in your NMR spectrum. Now, if we change to a scenario like this, and we do the test again, and we've changed uh, these two uh, atoms like we did previously, these are now diastereoisomers of each other, okay? So we have uh, a stereocenter here, and we've created a stereocenter over here. So because we've got two stereocenters, and one of them remains the same, and the other one changes, these are now diastereoisomers. So if the new compounds that you've made are diastereoisomers, then the original atoms are diastereotopic. And as we've seen in the video, diastereotopic uh, atoms are not chemically equivalent, and each of these will give you a different uh, signal in your NMR spectrum and they can couple to each other and so on.